Yo, welcome to another episode of uh, our podcast at Our City Tattoo, the channel where if you want to learn how to tattoo, this will be the channel where you're going to get all the information you need in order to do so. If you're already a tattoo artist and you want to improve your skills, we can help you out as well. And if you're just simply a, a tattoo enthusiast, you can just get more information uh, about the world of tattoo and that way you can make better choices uh, when it comes to getting your next tattoo. So today we have a very, very special uh, guest in, in the channel, uh, in the podcast. And uh, he, he won't admit it, but he was my first apprentice. But he, 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 he's not okay with that. He won't, he won't accept it. But I, I call him my first apprentice. He's the first guy that I, I feel that I, uh, I passed on some of my knowledge to. And uh, today he, he's a professional tattoo artist. And uh, we have him here. And uh, welcome. Hello. Hey. What's, What's good, up, bro? What's good? Thank you. So, um, nothing, bro. I just want to thank you first and foremost for for taking the time of your day to be here. I know you probably work today, and uh, it's hard. We work long hours, and then coming here like at nine, ten o'clock. It's ten twenty already p.m. Uh, I know. I know that. Um, that's that's something that you're doing for me and i really appreciate it no no problem bro. um so how was your day today did you tattoo chilling um today was my day off actually oh today was your day off okay so i got a haircut out. but i work tomorrow though you do look spiff yeah thank you i appreciate that thank you do too thank you i, I mean i i do it myself bro i just shape <laughs> I, I keep it uh i keep it shape but um tell me so you told me you were uh, you went on a trip right you like traveling just got back from europe yeah, how was got that? back from Italy, Paris, um, Amsterdam, and yeah, I think that's it. Bro, that's crazy. No, it was a lot of how fun. Long, was great. How long did you spend out there? Um, oh, and London. There London. we go. London. I knew it was the fourth place that I went to. Yeah. That is so dope, bro. No, it was fire. And the tattoo scene out there is way different than it is over here. In what sense? Tell In me the about. sense that they have good tattoos out there. They have really good tattoos. <laughs> yeah, everyone has really good tattoos. Well, I think the difference is that like people in in Europe, they're just they're just highly educated, bro. I feel like it's more accepted out there, also. Yeah, but I I, I think that they ha they just have better education. You know, they have a culture of like education, and and uh, most people they go to college. They're so surrounded they to, by they art. They go to art school. They're surrounded by art. They have history. They have huge cultural history on art. So I think it just kind of like runs in their blood, bro. Yeah, it's, I think it runs in their it's blood. It's beautiful out there. Yeah, and I, I feel like here in America, from what I've noticed is people have lower standards when it comes to quality and stuff like that and all that. They try to get into the price rather than the yeah, artwork. Yeah, bro. So what was, well, tell me some stories from out there, man. What, what did, uh, what, which country did you like the most out of? Amsterdam. Amsterdam. For obvious reasons. For obvious reasons that we <laughs> shall not mention. <laughs> the, uh, everything is just so beautiful out there. Yeah. And the shrooms are amazing. The shrooms are amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Everything's amazing. great out there. Did you did you do like did you go potent or did you just take like a microdose or anything like that? No, me. Oh, you took like a big. Yeah, we. I went full you went on. on a big trip. I went full on. <laughs> That's awesome, bro. That's awesome. No, it was great. No, it was and great. it must have been a crazy experience because you're in this like new place, probably somewhere that you've been wanting to go for a long time, right? And it, it must have been surreal. Like I could put myself there now. And, it right? was. Yeah, it's indescribable. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Well. I'm glad, man. I'm glad that you're getting to 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 travel and, uh, t bro, take advantage of that. Now that you don't have kids or anything, I think it's a great thing that you're doing, bro. Now, I'm going to try to do more guest spots this year. You want to do that? Yeah, I'm going to try to do a couple more guest spots this yeah. year and just travel around the U.S. a little yeah. more. Bro, you know that when I, when I was at the convention, that was one of the things that I really... Um, enjoyed was that I met a bunch of artists. How was it? How was the convention? the convention? I got a chance to make it. So we're talking about the uh, All Stars Tattoo Convention. It was the first one that was done here in Miami, and let me tell you, it was incredible, bro. 
I I've never liked conventions before and I really enjoy this convention because it was so well organized Andy everything went flawlessly oh, should have gone flawlessly the show was great the venue was great there was so many artists there I'm talking about like the best of the best in the world like people we look up to they were there and uh, just incredible art incredible art um, must have been intimidating no I felt good I yeah. felt yeah I felt okay um, th there was only one thing that I didn't like was that I so when they were doing the contest and this is the first time that I've seen this at a convention when they were doing the contest um, so if you won a prize or a trophy in, in a contest with a certain tattoo they basically would just disregard that tattoo for any other category and it happened to me personally because I had this back that I worked bro I worked over 100 hours on this back I've seen it bro I was so proud of this back so I, I got a trophy with that back but not for the category of back piece I got a trophy for it was like freestyle or something it's like a category that you can't really fit your tattoo in a category because my tattoo was so different so it fit into that one so I got second place awesome but then when it came down to the back bro they they just completely dismissed it they looked at it and they're like no he's already won and and mm -hmm. they were like uh on pur doing that on purpose like we want almost like we want to give everybody like yeah. a trophy of participation and Type i was of like thing, yeah yeah that's, it's just not i don't know it's not objective but other than that bro it was incredible i met a bunch of artists and the reason why i was telling you is because now i have like a couple of guys that i could go to their shop and they're they're really good artists that I can you know potentially go to their shop and and tattoo over there. So I think it's a great thing, bro. Yeah, connections. Uh, next year, if you want, you you're welcome to. I mean, I don't know if your shop is gonna go, but if not, you're welcome to come along with mine. We're definitely gonna go every year. Um, I don't see myself traveling a lot to other conventions just because how busy I am with my life and everything. Yeah. But. Uh, we're definitely gonna do that one every year because it's convenient. It's here, so you're welcome to to come with us if you want. If you're no, if for you're sure, I'm coming to the next one. one. Yeah, bro, and you're gonna link up with a bunch of people. You're gonna link up with a bunch of people. You're gonna have a great time. But um, also, I, I was working the whole convention, so I couldn't really enjoy everything that was going on. So for the next one, I'm probably just gonna plan plan like two days where I'm working and maybe the last day I can just chill bro and enjoy the convention because otherwise you just you don't really get to enjoy you don't really look get around enjoy, see the shows bro. yeah anyways let, let's get into this I have I have a few questions for you All uh, right. just about you know yourself in general and, and your career uh, how long have you been tattooing uh, about four years now four years now so when we met right what year where you oh, at in your career I don't oh that was me starting that was me learning how you to tattoo starting out yeah we that was just me at, learning we met at the FK FK Iron supplier. location yeah yeah here in Miami yeah you look like an asshole <laughs> you look I so, get that a lot I get that a lot you look so mean and so standoffish but I don't know we kind of hit it up we talked about the fact that I was opening up a studio right yeah and then you came over you and I remember we, you sat here with me and you were interviewing me like I was so you know you came over because you you were potentially considering working here in the okay, studio yeah. and you were interviewing me you were like so you want to make a school here and how are you going to do that like how's the space da, da, da. Do you remember I, thought that? Was a, I thought that was a crazy idea it was a crazy idea right? I thought it was a crazy idea at well, the time yeah it was and I, you know honestly I didn't I don't think that I had uh, a full understanding of everything that it took to do what I wanted to do, uh, but isn't it crazy that like we're do I, like, yeah, I'm it's doing picking this up, now yeah. and and this is the beginning, bro. This is the beginning of of that dream that I've had for a long time, and uh, this is it. So I'm, I'm really happy that you're being part of. No, it's that. good to see it coming true, man. Yeah, it's dope. Bro. So it's gonna it's gonna be dope. In the next few years, you're gonna. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna be right here with me, so I can't wait for for us to be able to to witness everything that's gonna happen. It's gonna be huge. Um, so, like, growing up, right? Um, were you were you an artistic kid? Like, did you do any kind of art at all? Not like, 
not like purposely i would say like it was like doodles here and there but i would say for the most part for a kid i think i was pretty like good at my little doodles but were you the kid that did well in art school and you yeah, really, yeah, I was you really, really enjoyed art school and all that? I was really interested in my art class, yeah. Okay. I never went to like, an, like a formal art school or anything like that. Right, right. I just had like regular art class, like an elementary school type and thing. And you enjoyed that and you always did well in those. Yeah, yeah. And just drawing while teachers talk. Okay. <laughs> so at what point, so, oh, I mean, you have a bunch of tattoos. At what point did you start getting tattoos? Like, what was the first experience you had where you're like, shit tattoos are cool and i want tattoos oh my god because you're heavily tattooed and when you I want was, more i think when uh, yeah, i yeah i want to be have i want to more tattooed yeah um i would say like when i was a kid when i was a kid i would just see other people like really tattooed and i just knew i really wanted to be tattooed so as you're, well okay so you're my age you're what 34 right 34, i'm 34 34 so you were a kid we we're talking what in the 90s i would say yeah like in the 90s i would say like maybe you like 10, 11 years old, maybe, is when I, like, really paid attention to my surroundings so and I noticed... late 90s, late 90s. People were already... You would see people already with heavy tattoos? In yeah, the I would 90s? say, like... I would say, like, yeah, at that age, I was, like, understanding what a tattoo is and how it's on other people's bodies. And, yeah, yeah I would say, like, yeah. Yeah, because for me, for example, I remember, like, being in Cuba, right? And I remember, like, mid-90s, when I started seeing around my neighborhood, like, the young guys, right, the teenagers they started coming up with like you know they started showing up with like the little tattoos it was like the 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 eagle and uh tasmanian devil i was about to say you know tasmanian I mean? devil it was like flash tattoo bro so because apparently in cuba what they would do is like they would just find um they would find magazines and they would just trace whatever they could find out of the magazine. That's how, that's how they would do it. So whatever size it was in the magazine, that, that was the size you had to run it. Yeah, bro. So like the tattoos were like thin. tiny as hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I saw one guy. I remember seeing one guy. He was fully tattooed. He was like a, like a. He was into like rock and roll. Like just we called him freaky, right? In Cuba, we, <laughs> those guy guys we call him freakies. And uh, he he was sleeved up, and he had. It was the first time that I saw, like, portraits. He had portraits and skulls and shit like that. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, really? That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. So that was that was my, my experience. So so you um, you start, you know, you start seeing a, tattoos, and you at that point you're like, okay, I want to get tattooed. Yeah, but I didn't just get my first tattoo until I was, like, 16, though. 16? Yeah. You got to get permission from your mom and all that? No, or did I didn't get you go no to, one's permission. Did you go to someone's house and do I it? went to someone's house, which no one do. Don't one ever, anyone yeah, ever don't do, do that. that. Don't do that. Please. But, yeah, I went to someone's house, and I got a tattoo. What'd you get? I'm not going to talk about it You're on camera. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. I but, yeah, I got a tattoo, and I got caught. <laughs> And I disappointed my family. You disappointed your family. <laughs> disappointed everybody, but eventually I got over you. it. Yeah, they got over it. They got over it. They yeah. got over it. You know, it's the irony, bro. I feel like, I mean, I don't want to generalize, but I feel like now they, they, you, you just meet so many people that are heavily tattooed, and they're just so kind and so nice. And it's, it's true. Yeah, it's not what it used to be. You know, no. what I mean, tattoos aren't for just you know criminals and gangsters. You know what I mean? It's no, for everybody. Bro. And most people who, for example, me personally, most people who come to me and they get tattooed by me, they're just people who really love art, bro. You know, and they're so nice. You know, they're from all walks of life, right? But I mean, you get them too. Yeah, I get a ton of firefighters. Firefighters. <laughs> I get a ton of cops, firefighters. Yeah. Uh, you name it, bro. Doctors. Anything. Anything. Yeah, any occupation. Just any about anything. Occupation, yeah, managers. Bro. Anything. Yeah. Do you get Do you get mostly men or mostly women? For my style of work, I, I get majority the male clientele. Yeah, me too. I get mostly, uh, mostly men, and uh, it's the large scale work. That's yeah, why. Yeah, it's the large scale war work. Is bold, or work is bold. Yeah, it's not really like light and dainty. Yeah, you know, yeah. that new style going, that Pinterest style going on. Yeah, but you know, it's, this is something that I've been thinking about lately. I would like to start gearing some of my work towards women. Like I gotta. I would really like to take some time and like come up with a series of designs that I think women would appreciate because like um, on small scale or like a large scale I think for the most part bro they like small scale stuff 
dainty stuff or like there's this there's this girl that I met at the at the convention the other day and uh, her work I'm I'm in love with her work I'm probably gonna have her next uh, here to interview and bro she hasn't been tattooing for that long maybe three four years but her work is stunning bro and it's very simple it's like those flowers that are like single line and it's like pepper shading mm -hmm. and she does big pieces on women but they don't look heavy it's so light it's so very airy clean. because it's very clean outline very light shading bro and it just complements the body so well i'm like obsessed with her work and i'm like of course that's what women want of course they're not coming here they're not getting my work because that's what women like they like that like like it's just it's the energy bro feminine energy you know they like the airy you know uh, soft Continue to put your phone on silent and my phone is hmm. on silent um yeah they like that like soft airy style of tattooing you know i i'm not a fan of that kind of work simply because i don't like like well, usually when it heals up and i kind of like my work to last a little longer than like yeah. three years yeah so i just i just feel like it's that kind of work heals a little too light yeah you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. at no, least the I ones that i have in my head right now i'm not no, sure how that artist that it you're does, talking about but that's what women like yeah because they don't want something so heavy on them that's what i realized um you know whose work is similar uh, when it comes to that i just hate the fading man no i know man i know like I've been watching this guy's work recently, uh, studying his work, Koso. You know who he is? Bro, oh, this, yes. This guy is super creative. Has like like a million followers. I mean, he's... Bro, but like on social media, he's been called out in the past why? for editing, heavily editing his work. Yeah, heavily, really? heavily. Yeah, oh, he's been I called out a bunch of times in the past for it. I don't know anything it. about that. But now from, from my expertise, I can tell that those tattoos they're not gonna last a long time on the skin. They're gonna fade. Oh, they def definitely Be do not. Because the way they're done. But bro, I really appreciate his creativity. Like his artwork is... Oh no, the artwork is there. It's witty. The designs it's, are amazing, it's, they're cool. It's beautiful, it's witty. Creative. Yeah, and it, it, it kinda has that like very, it's, it's just tasteful, bro. So like the other day I designed something inspired by him and I really enjoyed it. I saw it. You saw it, right? Very cool. You very saw cool, it, very right? Cool. But so what I want to do with that design? So I I, I did a um, I did a giveaway, and I was gonna give it away to this girl. She came yesterday, but like by the time we were gonna tattoo, it was really late. And like knowing me, like I, I don't like going small. I was gonna go big, and she was like, "Look, I can't I can't be here till like 3 a.m. in the morning. So we're gonna do it." Uh, sometime in December like later December we're gonna do it but I want to take what I got from him and I want to like solidify it but how large are we talking bro it was uh, so I, I'm That's assuming his big. work is around this size like more like or 10, less right yeah so I did mine maybe like this okay and then so what I plan on doing is and I did that on a piece that I have which is um the Lorax. Have you seen that piece that I did? Uh, it I, like, on the it, I like it a lot, yeah. Okay, so the one thing that I did on that one, which it was, I think, I thought it was like a really cool trick that I just thought about that day when I was working. On him, on the Lorax, I outlined him with a black line, but with a single needle. Mm. So you can't see it. You, you can barely see the outline. Bro, but it just like brings him forward a bit. in the image. And it doesn't blend with the background, and I know it's gonna last. That's really smart because it has that outline. So I want to do the straight same black? thing. Straight black, single needle, very light, but a solid line. By the time I put the color in, you can't tell. You can't see it. You when you zoom in, you'll see it. If you zoom in into that picture, you'll see it. No, but it gives it structure, bro. It gives it structure, bro. It gives it structure, and uh, I want to do that with that piece because that piece doesn't have a background so for example like the yoshi and the statue instead of just kind of like doing shading i want to do like a single needle outline and then the shading is yeah, yeah. gonna look fine it's gonna maintain the longevity for sure yeah it's gonna be it's gonna maintain and longevity. i think that's important in tattoos longevity yeah bro that's to me that's one of my main focuses like i think 
every artist has like some strengths and weaknesses i think that's my my strength because my mind it, like i have a very structured mind i actually did a this is really cool um and i can send it to you later i did a it's a personality test that this guy ty lopez he came up with it really smart guy do you know who he is no I love can't say do. so he's like a he's a big entrepreneur and he's all over social media and all that and i've been watching a lot of his stuff and uh he's really into like um the human psychology and understanding like human nature and he has a couple of uh, uh personality tests on his website but one of them is about so you fill it out you you answer the questions and it tells you what is the hormone that kind of rules your body or it rules your personality mm -hmm. and according to the hormone it's five different hormones it's what your what what is your strongest trait of your personality so it could be um i can't remember them all but mine was structure mine was structure. so it could be like structure it could be empathy it could be fear i think fear based or like danger so you, you're more like aware of danger and stuff like that then there's one that's like high risk so you're like a high risk taker which that one for sure is testosterone and then there's one there's one more that i can't remember but the cool thing is that like based on that then it tells you what what you're most likely to excel at as in your career yeah you know what i mean so mine was structured so it had everything to do with like engineering uh things to do with like business management and Makes stuff sense. like that so it bro it made all the sense in yeah. my in my mind because first of all i went to college for en engineering which i i dropped out but uh also uh i uh, like the way that i i always say this that the way i approach my tattoos i don't feel like i'm painting i feel like i'm sculpting like i think about structure and that's that's just the way that i imagine my tattoos so it's really cool i'll send you the link if you no if I'm, yeah I'm bro, actually, it's really super interesting interesting yeah. guy too bro look up his stuff because he has some like really really amazing just like life advice yeah yeah share me that link yeah bro it's really dope um let me see i got i got a few more questions here for you um so okay so you decide to get tattooed you're like 16 you get tattooed and then so how do you transition from that to say like okay i want a tattoo or did you did you get heavily tattooed in like your as you were a teenager or you were in your 20s or no i started how getting did it go yes for you? i started getting heavily tattooed in my 20s in your 20s yeah were you going to a studio or were you doing it out of a crib i was doing it out of a crib out of a house which i say don't do it again don't, don't do, do that it again. <laughs> did, so did you did you uh have any issues with that um actually the artwork was pretty good the artwork was yeah good. so i kept coming back the artwork was pretty good okay yeah but what about is it, did you get any issues with like something getting infected no or, no, you no, never no. Had any issues no the artist i had worked before at a at a re pretty reputable shop here in miami okay and yeah he just started tattooing out of his out of his house he just decided like i'm, I'm done paying commission or whatever. yeah for reasons i have no idea yeah. of he just decided not to start tattooing out of his house gotcha Okay. and yeah i just started going to him and became friends with him he was doing you know pretty decent work and yeah got two sleeves out of him wow so so is that how you involved yourself in in the tattooing world like that's what those experiences with this guy was what led you to say like this is something i want to try or yeah it inspired me to give it a try yeah yeah and was i hated my job you? at the time was he teaching you no 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 i i majority of the stuff i learned on my own online and then I just refined it with the people that I started meeting that were in that field. But were you, so at the time when you were working with him, were you asking him questions or anything? Yeah, like yeah. That? I asked him questions. You were questions. just inquisitive, right? Yeah, and I'm a very like visual person at the same time. So yeah. like I like to, like I, I learn as like watch, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I'm yeah, a yeah. visual learner. Me too. Uh, when I started getting tattooed, I did the same thing. Uh, the guy that I was tattooing me, which I got so lucky, bro. He was an apprentice like two years in, but he was good. Like this guy was really good and uh i just remember like just watching him watching him asking him a lot of questions and i was just being curious at the time i didn't even know i wanted to tattoo 
but I was just curious, you know? So I was just asking a bunch of questions, and by the time that I started, I almost, like, I was very natural in the way that I was, like, moving around, and I understood what I was doing. Yeah, you, know? you weren't going in too blind. Yeah, I wasn't going in too blind, bro. So, okay, so, okay, so you, you start getting heavily tattooed by this guy, and you were, what, what were you, sorry, what were you doing I was, for work? I was working for a company called Seaboard, and I was working, like, in the little accounting department, just doing, paying bills and shit like that, and... Okay. And then I just started getting heavily tattooed because I was trying to get fired. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> hey, they didn't fire me. I had to quit. So is that something you went to school for, or did you train... No, they trained me there. They trained you there? Yeah, they trained me there. Okay, so you were just doing the bookkeeping and all that stuff, Basically, right? yeah. Okay, and you hated it. I hated it. Like, there's so many I think people I did, like, out. three years of that, and I hated it. There's so many people out there that are like that, bro. Like, I, I get clients here, and I'm sure you get them, too, that they, they want to get out. They want to... I, ha I had a girl recently, she was my client, um, she asked me for an apprenticeship, and I gave it to her, I was like, sure, just come in, uh, I, I was like, just help me out with the content, like, help me out record, like, hold the phone while I'm recording content, and uh -huh. stuff like that, that's all I wanted from her, bro, because, um, you know, I, I don't believe in the whole, like, exploiting people for, to teach them or whatever, and, um, you know, she just gave up bro she just gave up and i wish she didn't bro because she has such an opportunity man and but tattooing is not easy man tattooing is not easy and i think some people it's it's not safe it's what i mean by that is like i feel like some people feel more comfortable getting that like steady paycheck and yes. knowing that you know that they can get paid or whatever as opposed to like something like now you you basically you're your own boss it takes a lot of discipline to be on top of yourself it takes discipline bro it yeah takes discipline. there's a lot of work in being a tattoo artist it's not just tattooing it's yeah finding your clientele working on your social media yeah. working on your art if your photography your designs yeah. yeah it's everything no and you know it's overwhelming sometimes and it's it's particularly harder for people who are older because, for example, when I started, I was lucky enough that I was 19, right? No, I was 20. So, I moved out of my house. I moved out of my mom's house. And I... So, I moved out of my mom's house. I was living on my own. And that's when I got my tattoo machine. I got into some trouble because I was selling drugs. Selling weed. But, yeah, I was selling drugs. That don't drugs. count. No, I'm kidding. I was selling <laughs> drugs. <laughs> And so I went to jail, and that was like a big wake-up call for me. And I was like, no, I'm going to go full into tattooing. So I, I go back home. But I have, you know, my parents didn't have a lot. But I had a roof. I had food. I didn't have to pay bills. So I had support. You know what I mean? So I think that's something that if, if you're young and you want to, to start tattooing, like do it now while you have the support of your family because as you get older it gets harder priorities because now you got to pay bills you know maybe you have a kid maybe you have to pay child support you got to pay bills you got to do all this stuff and on top of that you want to learn how to tattoo and tattooing you got to tattoo every day you got not only are you tattooing every day you got to learn you got to be on youtube watching content like this you got to be uh, reading books I read a, I read a ton of books when I was like learning and stuff so seminars seminars this that and then you gotta learn to uh, deal with clients get clients market yourself so it, it really is like a lot it yeah. can be overwhelming especially for somebody who doesn't have support not to say that it's not possible I feel like if there's if you want something in life you can you can get it because uh, you know like for example me in in the situation that I'm in right now I'm a single dad of three kids so I have I have them every week two days out of the week right so I literally have five days out of the week in which I, I have to do everything that I I have to do in those five days anything that I need to do professionally so that includes like content tattooing business learning studying reading like all of it yeah it's tough and i'm doing it you know what i mean i gotta work out you know what i mean 
take can't care have, of yourself. I can't yeah. have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have a, no, but you know what I mean. Like I, and I'm doing it. You know what I mean. And I have the 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 peace of mind and tranquility that I, it's. It might take me a little bit longer than someone who doesn't have kids or someone who has support, but I'm gonna get there regardless. Yeah. So. Um, so you start tattooing, right? So right around, that was right around when we met, right? How did you, what did you do? Did you just went online and bought supplies? Like what was, yeah, so from, went, from saying, okay, I want a tattoo to now I have these tools in front of my, run, run me through that, run me well, through that story. It started with me being really interested in first off. So I decided to go online, you know, obviously like YouTube, learn, but before all that, I wanted to really like learn about like the machine itself. So I decided to like get a, a little beard trimmer and take it apart, and I build myself like a little jailhouse tattoo oh, machine. Oh wow! <laughs> Which it worked. It okay. worked good and everything. I never used it on myself, but it worked. It would be cool to make a video. About I that. want to. I was talking about that in the shop the Let's other day. Let's make a video on it. Like we go to CVS, buy some Let's make beard it. trimmers, make it, and do a tattoo Let's out of it. Let's make it happen. I'm down. I'm down with okay, that. Okay. Cool. But um, yeah, man. Uh. And yeah, I built my, my first machine out of a beard trimmer, and I don't know, it just got me really, you know, started. So when I went and I bought some coil machines off of Amazon. I saw that the best way online is to start, like, the old school way. How much were they? Uh, I bought, like, a whole set. I think it came like, two machines, a shader and a liner for, like, I think, like, 100 bucks or something like was that. Was it one of those, like, crappy Chinese? Yeah. And uh, was it? Yeah, it was, like, yeah, it was crappy. It was crappy, right? Yeah, they were crappy yeah, machines. Yeah, I started with those. Yeah fucking the first line you put in just blows <laughs> out <laughs> yeah that's and it was <laughs> yes <laughs> but but it taught me like how to tune a crappy machine okay. you know what i mean like you know how to tune it how to mix it you know how to how does it work how to set up the the needle bar and yeah you know you know what's a game changer for me when i when i learned and i can't remember who taught me this that you could get a nail file you needed a nail file and you had to file between the spring, b between the spring and the contact screw. Did you ever do that? No. Oh, bro, that's why it was stuttered. Because so it builds carbon, like from the from the movement. Uh huh. The 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 tip of the screw it starts getting darker from the carbon, and then you lose contact. I so know. what I would do is like you know say I was tattooing and I would take a break. You take this little, like a needle file, one of those like metal needle files. Yeah, yeah. And you just file the between the screw and the spring. You put it there and you file it. Bro, and it's like super clean. It runs like... I smooth. didn't know that. That's bro, interesting. Bro, fucking crazy trick. I'm not going to lie. I do like using coils. Yeah. Rarely, but I do like them. You still use them? Rarely, but really? I like them. Yeah, it's just nostalgic. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I got the first coil machine that I ever touched, bro. I still have mine, yeah, I my crappy it. ones. I have. Well, it was actually before that because it was a friend of mine who he was tattooing from home. This I may have been maybe nineteen, eighteen, nineteen. He was a little older. He was he was you know getting into tattooing, and he had me grab his machine and go over like some letters that he had had on his arm. So I was like the very first experience that I had. It was terrible, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, years later, he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna send you something," and he sent me the machine. The machine I have. Oh, dope! There. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. That is really dope. Yeah. So okay, so you got you got your your set. Yes. And so what'd you do? Um. Yeah, I started using coils and just started practicing on like some fake skin. Okay. You, you didn't know. go out your own skin first, or no? Uh. Yeah, actually, the first thing I did was go on my own skin, which is not smart either. Not smart. Not smart either. Yeah. Um. And then I, I went on my brother's skin too, and then I started practicing. <laughs> you were like, I better use something else because this is not working out. Yeah, then I started, you know, like I bought some practice skin, I started working on that, and okay. yeah, that just helped a little bit more, and then I'd, eventually I moved on to like a rotary a couple months later. Okay. R was a big game changer, the rotary, so that helped a lot also. Yeah, right. So how did, how did you evolve? So you know you're you're figuring out you're learning how to tattoo i'm assuming you're doing it at home right you're figuring all this stuff out you're at home for the time being yeah yeah um how do you go from that to actually start working on people that are like paying you um well i started at the house 
and like I said, like I was just doing a lot of research on YouTube and stuff like that. I got involved with a little shop in Miami, which honestly it was a lot of like that old school um, hazing the apprentice type thing. Yeah, terrible. I don't know if I could say I give them credit for like saying that I actually learned anything yeah. from them. I learned how to pick up a studio. Yeah. But how to clean up. Yeah, how to clean up. But I can't say I actually learned anything from any of those artists yeah, yeah, at yeah. all. I feel you but um yeah so i went there then after that um went back into my house started tattooing again i got a lot better at that time because i was really determined to prove that shop wrong so but who were you tattooing were you tattooing friends family who were you uh working? friends and family at first friends okay. and family at first and they were getting they were actually really good tattoos at the beginning and then what so they started referring is that it just kind of started yeah yeah word of mouth word, word of mouth, mouth is always the best way to go mouth. Yeah, so I started tattooing, you know, friends and stuff, and I was just getting better. Yeah. Started getting involved, like, just getting involved more in tattooing and just putting my interest more into it in my effort. And after that, I got involved with another shop, and that's when I started, like, tattooing a lot better. Yeah. You know, I, was start, I was working with a pretty well-known tattoo artist. Um, we get to say names out here, right? Yeah, you can, of course. You can shout a them out. Tattoo artist named Carlos Torre. Okay. Um... You know, I was working in his shop for a little bit, which is not there no more. But uh, yeah, I learned quite a bit there. And yeah, it's about. So um, yeah, I mean that's uh, to to uh, make a point to that. I want to take a moment to thank you for watching this video and for supporting our channel. If you like this type of content, please make sure that you hit the subscribe and notification button. Also, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment below. We will go through every single one of your questions so it can help us improve the content that we're making for you. Also, it's gonna help us understand what it is that you need to learn about. Our goal is to make high value content with easy to digest information that is gonna help you along your educational journey in the beautiful world of tattooing and art. So thank you guys again, and I'll see you back in the video. I think it's really important or it's it's a big help if you're starting to tattoo to be doing it in your hometown or wherever you went to school at because for example I mean I didn't I didn't I was born in Cuba but I grew up in Kentucky right and I went to school there so I think it really helped me out because I had a lot of people that knew me so it was really easy to to start Get building referrals. up a clientele bro and on top of that, what ended up happening was, you know, there was a big Spanish community there. And I was basically, you know, a lot of those guys didn't feel comfortable going to a studio because they couldn't speak English. So they would come to me to get tattooed. Uh, and it was also like a lot of people that I went to school with. So as soon as I started tattooing people, like my friends, it just kind of like started spreading and spreading and spreading. And it never stopped, bro. Like the first i remember maybe the first six months that i started tattooing i mean and at the time it was a lot of money for me but i already had like ten thousand dollars saved up or something like that like fifteen thousand dollars yeah which actually that was the money that i used to move down here to miami you know and it was i mean for the time for for my age i'd never seen that kind of money before no tattooing so, yeah tattooing yeah. is really rewarding bro i had like 400 dollar days i remember one day making 400 dollars, and i was like shit like this is real like i'm i'm never working again anywhere yeah. else and i was terrible at keeping jobs bro because i was i was a pothead i was like smoking from when i woke up to when i went to sleep since i was 14. Yeah. i did that for 14 years and um i could never hold a job I could never hold a job. I was always late. You know, if I had a job where I had to drive a truck, I would I would get into an accident. Like I would if I had to sell something, I would never meet the quota. I mean, I was terrible, bro. Terrible with my job. So, um and very early I realized that I didn't like being bossed around. 
Same. Yeah, bro. I did not like having a boss. I didn't like having to come to a place at a certain time and not being able to miss. Same. And uh, tattooing gave me that. Tattooing for me was like my way out. Honestly, yeah, freedom. Bro. Hella it was freedom. My way out of of you know of that nine to five grind. Uh, and I owe it a lot. Everything that I have nowadays, I owe it to tattooing, including uh, the person that I am, you know, because and this is something that I can't say enough, bro. Like the people you get to meet, you know, you get, we have a lot of time to spend one on one with the people we tattoo. And it's just so many interesting people, bro. And when you do right by people, I mean, I'm sure you can pick up your phone, bro, and hit up. So, like, you need something, you know who you can call that will take care of that for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. When you do right by people, bro, like, literally, I... So, I told you I'm considering getting a new spot, right? And there's this guy who he is... He's my ex's uncle. And from the moment I met him, bro, I was super kind to him. I was almost giving him away his tattoos. I mean, he's got a full color sleeve by me. Really nice piece on his leg. I must have done maybe like over 50 hours on this guy. But I was giving him his sessions for $200. Damn. This nice. Was, this was like maybe five years ago. I was giving the work away. I, yeah. just, I wanted to charge him something because I didn't want to do it for free. But... This guy, is, this guy is a, he's a contractor, right? And now he's like, bro, I'm going to, I'm going to help you fix your studio, and I'm not gonna make a dime out of that. I'm just gonna like make the calls. I'm gonna, you know, get the people that I need in order to help you make the studio. This is what it's gonna cost you, but I'm not gonna make any money out of you. And that's just like, by simply by doing right by people you know what i mean yeah for sure like yesterday i i hit up this client of mine because i'm trying to figure out i've always been terrible with like accounting and all of that and i, I just got me like an accounting book and I'm, I'm trying to figure that out i really want to get um knowledgeable with that because if i if i make a bigger studio i'm gonna need it right and you know another guy that i just did right by man and i can i can pick up my phone and i can call that guy and just like bombard him with questions and he's there you know and that's that's so powerful and that's something that we as tattoo artists have as a perk you know what i mean no and it's a definite perk yeah bro and it's built me up not only that but like advices like life advice you get to talk to people you get to i mean i'm sure you experience that too where you're just sitting there so many hours with people you're i had a tattoo artist tell me one time that you told me being a tattoo artist is a life hack it's a life hack. It definitely right? is, bro. Bro, you know what? I, I'm I, definitely a life hack. I gotta agree with that. Being a tattoo artist, you is need something, anything. You know someone that you know what I mean. If you're a good art artist with a I good think clientele, I think it's if you're a good human being. Bro. Yeah, that as well. If you're a good human being, because if, you, like I said, if you do right by people, bro, people know, people appreciate it because almost everybody that I know that gets tattooed has had that asshole tattoo artists oh my god that mistreats them you know they think that that's they, everything i aspire not to be bro they think that they are um doing a favor to their clients for tattooing them for gracing them with their yeah, touch i always try to make like a very human encounter bro, like, i always try to make it like very like human you know what i mean just be cool no one's like above anybody you know bro, what i mean it's weird and like it's weird bro the way that I see some of my clients react to just being treated like human beings. Bro, they look at me and they, they put me on this like, uh, how do you say that? They put pedestal. me on a, on a pedestal of like a human, the, you know, the, the kind of human being that I am. But I'm simply just treating them the way I want to be treated. Like, yeah. it's nothing more than that, bro. And it, it's just sad, bro, that we live in a society where like, you know, just being kind it's it's out of it's out of the ordinary, ordinary you know what i mean that's, it's how, crazy, that's bro. how it was back in the day for tattooing i remember going to tattoo shops and no one paying attention to me and i'm over here trying yeah, to give awesome. money to get a tattoo and no one's paying attention to me yeah and all those guys are starving yeah yeah and they never really give you what you want they always yeah, gotta yeah. try to talk you out of what you what you want to get you know and yeah yeah just, but it's, it's a very like 
it's intimidating a world when it comes to getting a tattoo. At least back then it was. Yeah, no, but it's it's a different world now, man. It's a different beast. I think I'm actually really happy that the, uh, the way that tattooing is going, the industry, because I feel like there's a lot of people who are serious that are getting into the craft. They're serious artists. A lot of them are trained artists. And a lot of people are, you know, they come with a different mentality, like Raph. Yeah. Raph, uh, a common friend that we have, and I I also uh, apprentice him. I taught him, and uh, he just came with a different mentality, man. And I, I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot about, like, being professional, about, you know, um, be more organized, about thinking, about tattooing, not just as like art but this is your business yeah you know what i mean he gave me that like i taught him how to tattoo but shout out to raf like you gave me that bro and um there's a lot of guys like him that are coming into the industry that are making it really hard for the other guys yeah people with professional backgrounds you know yeah and it's making me like haul ass because you know i've never like i've never been an asshole or anything like that but I always saw tattooing as like my hobby that makes me money. You know what I mean? Like I was just, it's a craft that I love, I appreciate, I enjoy it. You didn't take it too it. serious. But I never really took it too serious as far as like business wise. Yeah. I took it, I've always t- taken it to the highest level of seriousness, seriousness when it comes to like building the best quality product tattoo. that I could possibly build, right? Because like I'm an artist. Yeah, you were into the tattoo aspect. Yeah. But, you know, like, it's now these, these people that are coming in the industry, bro, they're making me haul ass because I'm realizing, like, no way. And, and a lot it of It ain't just about the tattoos no more. It ain't just about the tattoo no more because anybody can tattoo, but, like, how well do you treat your clients? How hospitable are you? You know what I mean? Because that's really what makes the difference. And uh, that's where we're at now, man. Um... Now let me ask you: Would you say would you say it was um, like when you were getting into it, right? Did you have any like fears? Do you have any of those fears and concerns of like, is this something that like I should do? Like, were you scared of like, man, I gotta leave my job and then I'm gonna? Yeah, that was a big fear. At that first. was a big fear for you. Yeah, but I was because you so were a little sick older. How old were you when you got in? I was maybe like twenty nine yeah. or thirty. So you were at that point 30, where you had maybe? bills. You had to support yourself. Yeah, I had to haul ass and learn really quick yeah. how to tattoo and get good fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had to take it serious. How did you? How did you overcome that? Um, how did you overcome well, I had that? A, I had support that like we talked about earlier. Okay. Um, Family. Overcoming the fear, it was just about like just having more freedom. To be honest, because I just really wanted freedom and I just didn't want to work for anybody anymore. And who who was the support for you? Uh, my family. Your family. Family having my support and have my back in doing it. So. Yeah. I also, I mean, I, I remember you also telling me a lot of like your girlfriend, giving you a lot of support. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. She's she was the one that told me to get out of the house and start tattooing so in like a shop. A, she would give you encur- encouragement. And yeah. Stuff like she that. encouraged me to get out and start tattooing in a shop, and that actually upped my game a lot. Cause yeah, yeah. it, cause I'm a very like naturally, I'm just a very competitive person. Yeah. And just being surrounded by other artists made me just want to be yeah. better than all of them. You know what I mean? Did you? Did you? So when you when you got here to my studio, do you feel like you you kind of elevated a little? A I little elevated bit? a lot more because yeah. I had I was surrounded by better artists. Yeah. And I wanted to be better than you. You wanted to be better. <laughs> you got your work cut out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll no, see. You're black and gray. I don't know, man. You're killing it. You're killing it. I really like uh, I really like the stuff that you're doing now, man. I mean, I've I've seen your I've seen your progress. Let me see. I want to. I want to pull something up here from you. So I, I want to pull up because you were showing me this one earlier. This last piece that you did. Let me take a screenshot for editing later. Um, man, this piece is cool, bro. So, um, so what? What did you use for this piece? What? What? What inks? Sorry. Which piece are we talking about? This one. Oh, I use the AD Poncho, um, AD world Poncho famous, set. world famous ink set. Okay, I enjoy that set a lot. Like yeah, a lot. that's a really nice set, man. I use it sometimes too when I want to do stuff that is just like 
that is just like pure gray i want to get more into it but honestly like it just really depends the skin tone to get those grays to look like the way you want them to look you know what i mean yeah but did you so did you combine did you go fully saturated on the skin and you left yeah. no skin open? Because I see here you have some open skin here on the top. Did At the you... top is the only area that left a little open skin. Okay. So you kind of mix. I still got to finish that. I still need like maybe like a little, little. it's about like 85% done. I need oh, a little more, okay, okay. Little so more are you finish. planning on saturating that? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So it'll be like a full saturated. Yeah, piece. I love only doing full saturation yeah. on everything. Is, uh, what about no gaps no gaps i was just using i was just talking about uh i did a video for instagram today where i was talking about round shaders how like i swear by them and i love them so much i love them no one in my shop uses them are you serious no one uses them bro that's i love crazy. round shaders Lo you made me love round shaders of i used course. to like never use them and i started in the shop and i just found bro, round shaders. yeah and i i mean i picked that up from javi javi antunez shout out to javi antunez he was uh he was my mentor and uh Bro, Javi would do so much stuff with round shaders, bro. Like so much texture. His his work is really like textury. He's it's very he really versatile, likes that. Like it's a very needle. versatile needle, bro. And I was just making a video to them at a video saying if you're not using round shaders, bro, you're missing like half of the potential that you have as a tattoo artist. I've done full tattoos with round shaders. I bro. use them for all my tattoos, bro. For everything you need. This is something I gotta make clear. Like you need every single needle type. It's like going to play golf. I don't know, I've never played golf in my life, but like I know there's a lot of golf clubs, right? Mm -hmm. There's a reason why each golf club gives you a different hit or putt or whatever you wanna call it, right? Same thing with needles, bro. You need your liners, you need different size liners, you need your round shaders, you need different size round shaders. No, 100%. You need your magnums, different size magnums, bro. Do you use five magnums? Five magnums, no. Try them, bro. Five magnums? Five, bro. For what, texture? Bro, so five. So the thing about five is that I should have used the five today. I could have used the five on a lot of stuff and I didn't use it. That's another thing we're we're constantly learning. This is like an experiment that oh, we're constantly yeah, running. Always. Uh, so five magnums. You can get into really small places the way you can with round shaders, but it it shades like a magnum. So the shading is not as abrasive on the skin, and um, and it's smoother. But to in a very small area, right? You're gonna love them, bro. I recommend them highly. I would say I would say uh, get the flat ones like you, not flat but like you don't need the curve. They sell curve five curve. Yeah. Yeah. I, know. yeah. I thought they. I know they sell five flat. They have five curved. I would say not curved because flat. I, what I call flat is the ones that only have one row. You know those ones that which yeah. I, I don't know what those are used for. I've never used those in my life. But they have the ones that are curved, not curved. I would say. I would say get one of both and experiment. I, I'll actually give you some so you can take right. and you can play around with them. Bro, game changer too. And you can also do texture with them, but. I would think texture would be pretty good with them. Yes, but you still need your round shaders. Bro. No, yeah, round shaders. It's not going to replace round shaders. I'm telling you, every, every needle has something. It gives you something, you know. Uh, but yeah, yeah, for sure. I love this, man. I've round shaders are a staple in my set bro i'm Always. telling you like i use them for everything bro you know i did a full portrait with round shader ones like a full color portrait oh really oh okay. yeah color the, portrait. you know the the portrait that i did of al pacino the the color yes. bro that was a nine round shader believe it or not the whole thing nine round the shader? whole thing so the hand right he had a hand where he was like lighting up a cigar right so the and it was kind of the hand was um uh, uh, diffuse right because it was it was out of focus oh shit sorry it was out of focus so for the hand I remember I used either like a 7 or a 9 magnum right but then for the the rest of the face I didn't want to make it smooth because if when I looked at the image the where the one color transitioned into the next it wasn't like a clear line or it wasn't like a smooth cut it was like irregular 
and I wanted to get those irregularities because it made it look like skin. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I would come in with the round shader, not circle, just like back and forth. And it would give me that sort of irregularity, bro. I did the whole portrait like that, bro. That's fine. Badass I didn't know that. portrait, bro. It took me like 12 hours. I was about to say, man, it took me forever. Was, it was, took forever. I bet. Yeah, it <laughs> took forever. But all my tattoos take forever. So let me see. Let me see some stuff that you got here. Let me see. Let me look at some other stuff. Ooh, I like this one. I like this Frankenstein. These are these are recent ones that I'm looking at. Um, I want to look at some of your older stuff too because I I do want the audience to see your like your progression. You're what on your fourth year, right? Uh, my third prof fourth? professionally, I've been tattooing for three years. Three years, okay. So, so this one, did you use the 80 poncho set as well for this? I used the 80 poncho. You used 80 poncho. One. I can and tell because it has, it kind of has that like and blue I, I use greenish. Like, I used one extra green, like gray green. Okay. That's not part of the set. Oh, for the I, it does have a little bit of green to it, I noticed. For it. the background, yeah. Okay, okay. So, what, what do you feel that you have, like, what do you feel you're at artistically now, like, if I'm asking that question right um, like where do you feel you're at in your learning process what have you accomplished like what can you look back and say like okay like I've, I've accomplished this much looking at these pieces that you're doing right so comparing that to like where you were at you know in your first couple of years oh, I'm super what, grateful. what can you say that you have um, accomplished as far as like your technique or what you know like what what do you think what would you say is your greatest accomplishment so far um in the short amount of time that i've been tattooing i would say um uh, i don't know i've really progressed you know in the short amount of time i don't know if no but i mean I, i'm i guess i'm meaning like as far as like specifics like stuff that you have that maybe have been a challenge for you before and now you're like okay i got this like this is like well, I would I, say the whole thing, everything. The whole thing. Yeah, everything. Yeah, thing. everything's just overall gotten better. Yeah. Yeah. Because like my tattoos look nothing of what they used to. You know what I mean? Okay. So let me rephrase that question. Like, w what are you striving for now? Like, is there something to be the best I can be? No, but better than me. <laughs> no. But, okay. So for example, like, um, like me, right? When I was when I was in my sort of kind of like climbing up into my into becoming uh, a better artist or like uh, cleaning up my work uh, like I would do a tattoo and then I would make mistakes and then I would see those mistakes and I'm like shit I need to do that better next time right and then I would do it better the next time but then I would fuck up again at some other point I would mess up oh that's all the time and yeah. then you know the same mistake I would make it again because I would forget and then but at one point I'm like I got that on the lock and now it's my next thing so now it's like okay so I I cleaned up my lines now like I got a pack clean right or like now I need to like really master my round shaders or now um, I don't know I really want to like focus on creativity right so like where, where do you see yourself in that journey now or do you even see it in that way or you just kind of like progress on a day to day and I yeah I'm always just striving just to be just to get my art just better. To get better but I guess like what I'm more proud of I would say is maybe my my shading okay I think my shading's come a long Has way gotten better like smoother or what um or, or the value it was more like finding my my I guess my gradient, you know, I guess, well, finding my shading, I don't know how to like, really explain like, it. Like making it transition better? Yeah, because like I, like I we were talking earlier, like I noticed like at the beginning when I started tattooing, my work would like lighten up. Mm, so, I like, know what you mean. So like now. I went through that too. Yeah, so like now I've, I've understood like that, that anticipation of age and, you know, the sun affecting the tattoo and lightening up because all tattoos are going to lighten up regardless. Yeah. And also like having like the gaps, like the right gaps between values, 
yeah so i would say like that's what i learned is like learning my shading better you yeah, know what i yeah, mean yeah, like yeah. learning my drop system better learning yeah, how yeah. dark i should go not being scared of going too dark because that's what a lot of people have a fear of is going mm -hmm. black but black is the way to go always yeah, you know what yeah. i mean like you have to go dark on tattoos yeah well so for me for example i had that phase where i wouldn't leave enough for example like my light when i was doing black and gray a lot of black and gray my light tone was very close to my mid tone and then i had black so you know my tattoos would end up being just like black and then mid tones and little... light tones would be completely washed what? out yeah then that was a problem i had too then i went the completely opposite extreme where like i made everything dark that's happened too bro and like the tattoos would come out so dark i hated them right and then eventually you know mm -hmm. i uh I, I figured out like what was the right jumps between uh, each each uh, drop set right yeah each drop uh, count and uh, you know now now I figured it out and now it's to a point where like almost the same shade that I put in is the shade that it stays yeah so definitely with black and gray which I haven't done in a while I have a client now that wants to do something I'm looking forward to. Are you using bug? Are you using bug pins? No, no more. No more. I stopped using bug pin because of you. Okay. I so I just use regular taper needles, medium regular. taper, medium taper, medium taper, standard needles. like medium. They're taper. standard because they work for everything, bro. It's like the. There's no point to bug pin sometimes, man. Unless you're doing like micros or something like that, like micro black and gray, especially. Yeah. That's all I could think of it being good for, cause yeah, yeah, yeah. eventually like it all smooths out. Yeah. All, all that smooths gradient out. smooths out, anyways. It looks great for the picture like when the, when you yeah. do the 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 bug pins and all that they look really good on the picture as opposed to not using them like using a medium taper yeah, i feel like it's all technique man i feel like i can get a smooth gradient with medium taper just yeah. as smooth as bug yeah, pin yeah yeah i i agree I it's agree. all like the hand pressure and technique you know what i mean i agree i agree and um and yeah and like i said the, those medium tapers they're they're like the perfect middle um, they're great I like it they're good yeah. for color good for black and gray yeah I I, like bro, I swear by them and I tell people and like I did a video not long ago on Instagram when, when I was talking about that I was like medium taper for color medium taper for color and a bunch of artists for everything bro a, a bunch of artists call me out like oh no like good artists uh, oh like you're crazy like I use long taper and my work is great and this that's and that. okay you can like, keep struggling <laughs> yeah but I'm telling keep you bro you can finish it half the time you're struggling you could literally finish in half yeah. the time if you're using medium taper yeah bro. it's true especially if you're not especially if you um, if you're using like a, a good quality needle like quadrants bro yeah I'm quadrants are good da Vinci's, quadrants, uh, da Vinci's Cheyennes are good if you got the money yeah you know? <laughs> you know what I've never tried Cheyennes I should try them out bro they're amazing are they better than quadrant would you say I would prefer quadrant man <laughs> You would prefer quadrant? Yeah, man. I really? like quadrant. I use I use quadrant for everything right Bro, now. Bro, I'm obsessed with quadrants, but I'm gonna tell you, do you use quadrant round shaders? Yes, I like them a lot. Do you? Oh, I do. You, you don't like black them? and gray? I don't like them for color. No. I don't like them for color. Well, I don't know, cause like they're kind of quadrant round shaders are kind of like very sharp. So I like the bigger round shaders for color. Well, so here's the thing with quadrant. It's the best needle that I've ever tried. Like bottom line, like. As far as the quality of the needle, how sharp it is, and bro, it goes into the skin like butter. Quadrum, that's it. Like my magnums, they're all quadrum, right? But what happens with the round shader is the way that they design the the tip. It loses its it loses uh its taper kind of. No, uh, no, the way that they design the reservoir, where the ink gets pulled up and it drains out when you're tattooing. The way they designed that is so tight to the needle on the round shaders that the ink doesn't flow out. Not the same. It doesn't flow out the same as the Da Vinci. So what I do is like I use. I wish they would redesign that because I love Quadrant. But what I do is I use Da Vinci for round shaders, and then I use Magnums for Quadrant. But I want to try. I want to try Cheyenne. Man. You're saying you think Quadrants are better than Cheyenne? I like quadrant. I use quadrant like for quadrant. everything. Yeah, I like them too. They're amazing. Yeah, they're and they're easily accessible. That's the best part. Yeah, I hope that's. And they always got my there. size. Guys, you should sponsor me. <laughs> what methods did you use to learn how to tattoo? What was it like? 
you know, for me, for example, when I when I want to learn something, first I jump on YouTube and I watch a ton of videos, and then I like books too, and I like uh, like I I got tattooed, so I would watch. Um, so those same. are kind of my methods. Like, did you do the same thing? Yeah, I did the same thing. I'm very like I said, I'm very like visual learner. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah seeing it get done and i ask a ton of annoying questions yeah yeah so that helps also yeah and some people need teachers but some people just can go on youtube and watch something and pick it up and i think i'm one of those people yeah and also i yeah. i stood next to a lot of artists and just watched them tattoo like yeah. i get mesmerized and i just sit there watching yeah i remember you used to watch me a lot too yeah and you just learn a lot from just yeah watching. you would you would be done uh tattooing and i would remember you would come over to my station and we would just like start talking about yeah yeah just start so, with learning yeah just take advantage man yeah yeah i did that a lot too with with hobby man i would i would bombard him with questions man i always had questions for yeah him. when you have a good artist around you it's good to just abuse the shit out of it and just yeah, get yeah, everything yeah, you can yeah. learn out of it yeah yeah um do you have any advice for people who want to learn like just any advice at all anything you can you can think of that would be helpful for people who are want to learn either young or older or whatever whatever that question uh, makes you think about yeah it's such a hard question to answer because i've seen so many people like try to go for an apprenticeship and just fail at it like you had recently one so it's like i would say discipline man like that just drive yeah. you know what i mean that drive to want to do something for yourself you know what i mean yeah you know which i feel like a lot of people lack yeah you know what's what's something that i just came up for me now that i asked you that question um one thing that i would say is like know yourself like really know yourself and know how you function and know how you learn you know what I mean? That way you don't you don't get to a point where um, of frustration, right? So, for example, for for someone who's learning, understand like, do you need a mentor? Like, do you need somebody to like be side by side for, with you and teach you? Because for example, Raf, he understood that. Raf understood that he wasn't a person that could learn on his own. So he was like, you know what? He was smart enough to understand that, and he went and got a mentor. He yeah. went and met me, right? So it was like efficient, you know, as opposed to, you know, maybe you understand like I can learn on my own. I can just like hop on YouTube and learn whatever it is that I want to, that I want to learn about. So I think, as somebody who is learning, understanding that, like who you are and how you function, and how you learn, is I think it would be like a really good. Speaking of that, I feel like that's an important quality. And being a tattoo artist is just having an open mind. Yeah. Because a lot of people I've seen in this industry that they teach themselves and they stick by what they learned. Yeah. And they don't want to get out of that comfort zone. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's those. That's the people their work just doesn't like elevate. You know what yeah. I mean? Because they're just so like stuck in their way. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think just any any I mean humility, bro. Anything in life that you do with humility, not lack of confidence. Humility. Anything in life that you do with humility, um, you're gonna grow because you learn more from listening than you learn from talking, and that's something that, at least for me as a young man, I always emphasize on. It was like listening, and uh, I think I learned a lot from people. I always had this concept that, like, all the knowledge in the world comes from human beings, right? That means that everybody has something that you can learn from them yeah everyone comes from Bro, different walks of life everybody can teach you something so um i think that's important and um and yeah just just being humble uh and allowing other people to to teach you what they know it's, it's super important um and also those people man those people are usually the 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 how do you say how would you say that like the like the most conceited artists are the ones that always suck. Hmm. You know, like I'm great, I'm great, I'm the shit, bro. And they just suck because they don't really. They don't have like, that humility, you know what I mean? They're open bro. to learn anything, yeah. Yeah, bro. 
So yeah, I would say that. Uh, I would say I'm always learning. This job, I, this learning, job bro. is forever an apprentice to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, I'm obsessed with learning, bro. Yeah. I'm obsessed with learning, and uh, I think I'm on a, I'm, I think I'm at a new phase in my life where uh, I put uh, like learning about tattooing a little bit in the backseat now. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been yeah. doing this for 14 years, so. Um, I feel like I still have a bunch of stuff that I would love to learn how to do like I really want to learn how to do uh, like using ZBrush like those 3D programs Blender and all that bro it's a game changer also. I wish I had time to like learn that stuff and um, constantly for me uh, constantly learning about um, creativity like working on my creativity and discovering myself as an artist it's, it's something that never stops but all of that right now, it's a little bit in the backseat because like, I really want to do this um, that we're doing now. I think it's, it's going to be really important and, and I'm going to be creating something big uh, for a lot of people that, that are going to be impacted. The audience is, a lot of people in the audience are going to be impacted by this, man. And I think a lot of people are going to um, change their lives by, by this that I've decided to do. Like I, I believe that deeply in my heart that it's gonna be that way. Like a lot of people are gonna, their lives is gonna change. They're, they're, that prayer of like, you know, I want something like, please bring this thing that is going to like, get me out of this space that I'm in, so I can do that thing that I've always wanted to do. Yeah. That prayer is gonna be answered for a lot of people, so. Um, like, I'm, I'm really passionate about this. And, um, but yeah, I'm always learning. Like right now I'm learning a lot about like content and uh, business and stuff like that because I feel like that's the phase that I'm, that I'm at right now. Um, but yeah, like that hunger uh, to, to constantly be learning I think is so important as an artist. And I feel like the moment you lose that is the moment you're no longer an artist, bro. Yeah, I would have to agree with you on the that. The moment you lose that is the moment you're no longer an artist. Um, How's your back? In pain. In pain. That's that's one thing I need to learn as a uh -huh. tattoo artist. How to like just position myself I can give better. You, I can give you a good tip. But so the thing about And I know that only helps so much to be honest with you. Okay, so the, but one thing that I realized with as a tattoo artist, your back is always gonna be sore. But there's a difference between sore jobs. and pain. Yeah. You can avoid pain. There was a there's a video on YouTube that I saw years ago, and uh, so it was a, a guy and his brother. His brother was a chiropractor, and what he explained was that you have to sit at the edge of the chair. Don't sit in the back of the chair because if you sit in the back of the chair, you're gonna naturally like bend forward, right? Yeah. So don't do that. Sit in the edge of the chair, and then you kind of like stick your butt out and you stick your chest out. And like that's that's the right position. I remember you, you told have. me this. Yeah, bro. and I forget to do it. Because I always used to get on your case about it. Because you tattoo like this and like really uncomfortable. And it all. I mean, I'm sure you're already experiencing, but it's really taxing for the body. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, um, but it's something that you have to like consciously do for a long time until it's like automatic. Yeah. You know, and sometimes Second I even nature. like. Sometimes I even like let go a little bit and I kind of hunch over, but I think ever since I've been doing that, and you know, you know, it was something that was like uh, giving me excruciating pain in my back as well. When I used to bodybuild, like I, I mean, I wasn't bodybuilding like competing, but when I was like uh, doing body, body working out, when I was doing bodybuilding training, I would do it in the mornings. And then I would come tattoo, bro. I started developing this like crazy chronic pain in my back, to the point that I I couldn't tattoo for more than three hours, bro. Yeah, I got prior injuries from my workout days also. Yeah, well, for me, what it was, it wasn't an injury. It was the fact that my back, I think, would just get loaded from just you know the stress, and then the stress on top of that of tattooing completely destroyed me. So I had to learn to I had to learn to develop certain workouts that were okay for my body so what I do now is I I mean I'm, I'm not working out like going to the gym because I don't have time 
but what I what I'm doing is I got that pull up bar. I do pull ups here, like during my breaks. Yeah. Dude, I I knock twenty pull ups, and I knock like forty fifty push ups every break. I do that, and then in the mornings, like four times a week or so, I go for a run, like around the neighborhood here. I do like maybe. I don't know, like three and a half miles. It's like forty minutes. Yeah, 40 no, minutes anything long. is good. No, I got to carry your health when in this business. Bro, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. Because tattooing is painful. Let me it's tell taxing. you, taxing. Hell yeah, it's painful, man. I, I I feel it in my body, and people don't get it, man. Yeah, they don't and, get it. Yeah, and being fit, I think, is essential. It helps. Yeah, it essential. Helps. Is there any aspect about tattooing that you may want to clarify, like? something that might be a myth or you think that like you know people don't know or people think it's one way and it's it's not like that not all tattoo artists are assholes not all tattoo artists are asshole yeah that's a good one uh i would say tattoos are done quickly oh yeah tattoos are thank you week master bro tattoos let me tell you they are not done quickly they're not i feel like i'm pretty fast at tattooing i'm pretty fast but people do expect like a yeah, sleeve yeah, in a day type yeah. thing and yeah. that's just not the case no, most people can't even handle that in the day you know what i mean so, no, no 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 bro and people don't even know what they're bro, asking I'm for telling sometimes you, like the back piece that i did we did a hundred hours andy um you know, i'm a little exaggerated human being you guys will will, will, <laughs> will learn about me but like I'm very, when it comes to coloring and packing color and all that stuff, like I'm very meticulous because I I don't want to touch up a tattoo. I want to I wanna put the ink in there and I don't want to see that tattoo. Yeah, you don't want to damage it either. And I don't want to damage it, but I'm, I'm very like slow in my, in my application. Bro, I spent a hundred hours on that back piece. And then on top of that, when it was done, on top of that, when it was done, we did maybe another 30 hours of touch-ups, bro. So this back had like 130 hours. Like I've done pieces like like this yeah, size. Yeah, I've, I've seen the touch-ups. Uh, this piece was 20 hours, bro. This piece took 20 hours. People don't realize that. Like good tattoos take a long no, time. No, no, for sure. Yeah, that for black sure. Black and gray is a little bit faster because of the way the the ink is applied and all of that. Classic black and gray is classic. Classic black and gray. Cause black new, with water. The new era black and gray, it ain't. It it's ain't. a little bit, it's a little bit, fa- little. It's in the middle. It's in the middle. I would say it's in the middle. It's a good, a good medium, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I feel like it's got better longevity also. Yeah. The, you know, little, little drops of white in there. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I like it. I like that black and gray. So this is this is a subject that's been in my head like the last few days, and I think it's, it's the last thing that I want to ask you. Um, like, and this is mainly for clients, I guess. Tipping, right? <laughs> how do you, how do you feel about tipping in the world of tattooing? I'm do you ex- think it's necessary? Would you say th- that you see your clients differently when they don't tip you or? I would say it just depends. It depends. Because, like, I work for myself. Yeah. You know, I have my, my own name, my own brand name. So, I make my own prices. Yeah. So, like, I don't really typically expect... I get you. ...a tip. Yeah. But I'm always super grateful when I get a tip. Yeah. Always very grateful when I get a tip. But I never expect it. Yeah. But in the sense of, like, if you're working for a street shop... Yeah. I would say it's customary. I would say it would be nice to, like... You know, yeah. cause those artists are only making fifty to forty percent off commission of their tattoos, so I would think it is a little bit more customary yeah. to tip them. Yeah, and you know what? So for me, I I feel exactly the same way as you. Like, I I make really good money tattooing, so I never expect a tip, but I really appreciate it when I get one. Yes, me and too. it's not it's not about the money, bro. It's really not. Because it's the gratitude I, is yeah, just it's, like I did a good job. You know what I mean? It's a symbol of gratitude, bro. Yeah. And you know, you don't have to tip your. I mean, my tips sometimes they'll vary anywhere between like twenty bucks to up to like a few hundred bucks, Same. right? A few hundred bucks. But for me, like I don't care the amount. It's it's the fact that you said, you know what? I really appreciate that you took the extra time or or you went above and beyond for me 
and you know here is something that symbolizes my gratitude for you and let me tell you like it's okay if you don't tip but we live in a society especially my america has like a really big uh tipping culture and 80 to 90 percent of the clients that sit in my chair or like in any tattoo chair they tip so if you don't tip you're that guy that doesn't tip yeah you know what i mean so I would say I would say that, you know, if you're on a budget or whatever, at least buy your artist lunch or I, I mean I buy my clients lunch. Like Oh my god, I have clients that hook me up with gifts. Yeah. Little just anything. do something, bro. Just you know, obviously if if you feel like this artist went above and beyond for you and he, you know, you're extremely happy with the work that you got. If this is the case, like just tip him something, man. Ten bucks, twenty bucks. You can say, hey, you know what? I don't have a lot of money, but here's something. You know what I mean? And I guarantee you that that person is really gonna appreciate it, and they're not gonna forget it. And sometimes it's the person you least expect. I've had clients who have like a whole, like six hour tattoo session, not talk at all. And yeah. At the end of the tattoo, they just tip me a, hundred, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah for sure man. we didn't even talk <laughs> i know man i know it's usually the people you don't expect and it's usually the people who have less money yeah it's usually the people who have less money that tip you and appreciate you more i don't 100%. know what it is about like people who have a lot of money that really stingy you with their money it's just the way it is can't be rich if you're giving it away you're right, you're right. <laughs> that's how i'm gonna be soon and i give my money away um is there um is there a horizon for you artistically? Like, is there something you want to reach? Um, only artistic. Like, what's your, what's your ideal? Like, like, do you see yourself already doing your ideal work? Or what does your ideal work look like for you? I'm getting closer to it. I'm getting to it. Okay. I feel like my ideal work is realism in my way so and a lot of people are coming to me for my style and okay. my realism and stuff like that and that's cool i i could feel like yeah i'm i would say like yeah i'm, I'm pretty much where You're i would like there. to be that's good man that's really good um is there any is there any artist that you would say like that's the goat like that's 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 the guy that really inspires me that's the guy that you know Oh, I have a few. Maybe that maybe you model your, your work after a little bit. Yeah, I have a couple. Name them. Off the top of my head. Just give me one at least. Um, Jarrell Larkin from Las Vegas. Yeah. He's a, I like his work a lot, and okay. I aspire to try to get my grades and my gradients like his. Okay. Stuff like that. Have you considered going out there and tattooing? Yeah, I've actually talked to him. You have? Yeah, I've talked to him. He invited me over the, uh, this year coming up to oh, go dude, guest spot in Las that. Vegas. You yeah, yeah. Do that. I'm definitely going to go out there and see him. That's dope, bro. Yeah, That's yeah. Dope. Um, bro, so, you know, people who are watching this and they might want to, like, get in touch with you, get a piece with you, uh, how, can, how can they find you? Where? where um, what's your Instagram? You can follow me on Instagram. What's your on, Instagram? Uh, Angry Andy Tattoos. Okay. And yeah, I'm right there to hit okay. that follow button. Okay. And say what's up. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that I put like on your behind under you somewhere here. <laughs> you're gonna have you're gonna have your Instagram so that people can know how to how to get a hold of you and stuff. Fire, bro. Like I have this like overwhelming sense of joy in my body right now after doing this with you. Like. I'm super no, it was happy. fun. I like this. It was fun. I'm super happy, bro, that you came. I can't thank you enough. And uh, maybe, maybe we we can do it again. No oh, hell yeah, sometime. man. I'm maybe down. I, maybe after you go see uh, your guy. Yeah, no, I'm down as hell. Can, after my next guest, spot, yeah. Sounds good. For sure, bro. All right, bro. Thank you so much, bro. It was a pleasure, as always. Gracias, bro.